we've been talking about the reaction order. Here is the method that we're going to use to find the reaction order when we have more than one reactant. So here's a typical reaction. You have nitrogen dioxide plus carbon monoxide makes nitrogen monoxide plus carbon dioxide. We can write the rate law for this reaction. The form of the rate law is rate is equal to the rate constant times the concentration of the first reactant to some unknown power x times the concentration of the other reactant to the y power. In the initial rate method, what you do is you change the concentration of one chemical, leave the concentration of all the other chemicals the same, and measure the starting or initial rate of the reaction. So here we have data for three experiments. We vary the concentration of the reactants and measure that starting rate. From this information, we're able to figure out all three unknowns, x and y, the exponents, and also the rate constant, k. So for example, experiment 1 and experiment 2 keep the concentration of carbon monoxide constant. So experiment 1 and experiment 2 tell us the effect of varying the concentration of nitrogen dioxide. How does the rate change when the concentration of this reactant changes? Choosing those two experiments lets us write down a ratio. It doesn't matter which one we put on the top and which one we put on the bottom, but let's say we put the second experiment on the top, so the rate of the second experiment according to the table is 0 0.0082 molar per second. And we know that that follows the same rate law, K times the concentration of nitrogen dioxide, which in experiment 2 is 0.2 molar, and that's raised to the x power, times the concentration of the carbon monoxide to the y power. By itself, that's not enough information to solve for any of those variables but we're going to do a ratio, so we're going to set up a similar calculation for experiment number one. The rate is 0 0.0021, but the rate law has exactly the same form. The difference is the concentration of nitrogen dioxide changes from experiment two to experiment one, while the concentration of carbon monoxide stays constant. Because it stayed constant, we can set up a ratio between the two, and those two constant concentrations will cancel out. The rate constant K will also cancel out. The units, molar per second, will cancel out. Which means the left-hand side is just the calculation which gives us 3.905 and the right hand side is 0.2 to the x divided by 0.1 to the x. We can simplify the right hand side to 0.2 divided by 0.1 the whole thing to the x power and that still equals 3.905 and 0.2 divided by 0.1 is just 2 to the x. So we have to solve for x to give us the order with respect to that chemical, nitrogen dioxide. The way you solve for x is you take the log of both sides because the log of 2 to the x power is equal to x times the log of 2. The effect of the log is to take that exponent and bring it down to the same line as the log of 2. The left hand side is just the log of 3.905. So we can divide the log of 2 over to the left 
and we'll have x by itself. And x works out to be 1.97. Remember, x is the order, and the order is usually a whole number. Or it might be a nice number like 0 0.5, 1.5, etc. So when we get an experimental measurement of 1.97, we can say that x is 2. So we found one part of this rate law. We just found the exponent x was equal to 2. We got that by comparing experiment 1 to experiment 2. Now what we want to do is choose two experiments that's going to give us information about the other exponent, the exponent y. So for example, in this case, experiment 2 and experiment 3 keep the concentration of nitrogen dioxide constant but vary the carbon monoxide. So if we set up a ratio between experiments 2 and 3, and again, it doesn't matter which one you put on the top and which one you put on the bottom, let's put experiment number 3 on the top. The rate of number 3 was 0 0.0083, and that equals the rate constant k times 0.2 to the x times 0.2 to the y. We're going to do the same thing for experiment number 2. The rate was 0 0.0082. And the only difference between the two experiments was the carbon monoxide concentration was different. This time when we set up the ratio, k cancels but so does 0.2 to the x. So the right hand side, 0.2 divided by 0.1 is 2, so we have 2 to the y power is equal to 1.012. And again, if we take the log of both sides, the y comes down from the exponent, and if we solve for y, we get an answer very close to zero. So now we have two out of the three variables in the rate law. We're able to write the rate law is K times the concentration of nitrogen dioxide to the second power times carbon monoxide to the zero power. The only variable we don't know is K and k is a constant, the rate constant. So we could pick any experiment we want to solve for k, because in theory, a constant should be the same number. We can choose to look at any of these three experiments. I'm going to choose to pick experiment one. So in experiment one, The rate of experiment 1 was 0 0.0021 molar per second. That equals K times the concentration of nitrogen dioxide, which was 0.1 molar squared, times the concentration of carbon monoxide, 0.1 to the 0. And if you solve for k, k will work out to be 0.21, and 
and the units are molar to the negative one seconds to the negative one. So the whole rate law is now known. We know the value of K. We know that it's second order with respect to nitrogen dioxide. We know it's zero order with respect to carbon monoxide. And we know that anything raised to the zero power is just one. So we can simplify this rate law as just K times the concentration of nitrogen dioxide squared.